What is a creepy fact about the human body? Your intestines know what shape they're supposed to be in and can move themselves. Which means gut surgeons can just stuff them back into you when they're done and they'll just sort themselves out. Story 2. Your tongue has incredible tactile capabilities. So much so that if you look at any object, you can vividly imagine what it would feel like to lick it. Go ahead. Look at the wall, your shirt, your shoe, the tongue knows. Story 3. The intestines are covered by a double fleece or peritoneum. See it like a blanket. When your intestines get damaged for whatever reason, the blanket starts moving out of itself and crawling upwards towards the place which has the injury. It will stay there until the injury has recovered and then move on again. Maybe not the most creepy fact, but definitely interesting in my opinion. Story 4. The liver can grow parts of itself back. Also, if you get a splinter or foreign object stuck in your skin, you can hold a flashlight against your skin and shine the light through your flesh, and the foreign object will be a dark spot. Light actually passes through our flesh quite well. Also, if you shine a bright enough light into your mouth, you can see the light in your own eyes. Story 5. One thing that spun me out was hearing about fallopian tubes after a friend went through emergency surgery. Fallopian tubes are mobile and active parts of your reproductive tract. When one tube isn't there or is broken, the other can actually move over to the opposite ovary and pick up an available egg. This one freaks me out. The body really does do a lot of stuff on its own to just survive, huh? It's all about making more babies and evolution, so that's what it's trying to do. Story 6. Incident number 1. I had a bad enough broken bone when I was 9 that it almost unalived me. Apparently the marrow that makes blood can't exist in your bloodstream. Fun fact! Incident number 2. My orthopedic surgeon and my neurologist still don't have a good explanation as to how I have full range of motion in my legs i.e. the ability to walk slash run even. I've never seen a super smart guy like my neurologist just go, I don't really know, after I had broken my back and had nerve damage and partial paralysis in both legs. My neurologist says that sometimes cerebral spinal fluid can act as a bridge for major nerve damage, so maybe that. Otherwise, he doesn't know. He wrote some published stuff about it that was more questions than answers. All I know is that when I get x-rays done or switch doctors, the response is, how did you walk in here? It visibly unsettles them, like I'm playing a prank and my wheelchair is hidden somewhere. I don't really care if I'm being honest. It hurts a lot sometimes and people can get really weird when I remind them that I can't do some things. But hey, I can walk so it doesn't matter much to me. Long story short, sometimes your body can do some weird and creepy stuff that even professionals go, eh? About? Story 7. Our minds can be tricked and our minds can trick us. Some people sleep with their eyes open. Our memories are fallible. If you remember something from 10 plus years ago, the events in your mind are likely changed. You might remember a couple things properly, but our memories are almost never 100% accurate. On top of that, we usually don't remember the unimportant stuff. Our dreams are a product of our subconscious, from any memory, especially recent ones. While none of these are super creepy, I'll give OP the pass just for pure volume here. They really just banged them out one by one. People sleeping with their eyes open? That one's weird to me. I've only known one person who does it, but I guess... I don't observe people sleeping that often, and I've never asked, so maybe more people I know do. But also, that just sounds really inconvenient. Wouldn't they dry out really fast? I feel like eyes are supposed to be closed when you're sleeping for a reason, or maybe I'm wrong. Story 8. Heard a story of this guy who got an axe or something to the head. Destroyed most of his brain. Except the part that processes routines. He got up from bed beside his dead wife, got dressed, started brushing his teeth or what was left of them, casually checked the mirror and wiped his skin of some blood with tissue, walked around the house and collected newspaper from the doorstep and eventually just collapsed. He was like a zombie, unaware of anything except for his routine. Really freaky. This seems like the human version of a chicken running around with its head cut off. And I agree, super freaky, I don't know how I feel about it. Story 9. Sometimes there are just extra muscles. You can go your entire life without even knowing it. I've worked as a mortician and the Emmys would tell me about some cases like this. Also just random tumors, even when the individual had never been diagnosed. Lastly, skin sounds like saran wrap when peeled from the body. Story 10. There's a nerve that has the nerve of not knowing what its purpose is. Specifically the ulnar nerve, aka the funny bone. The rest of this is taken from a Tumblr post. The reason it feels so weird to hit it is that it's not designed to deliver pain signals. So when you hit it, it just wigs out and sends garbage signals to the brain. And the brain is like, uh, dude, ulnar, what the hell is this? You're supposed to curl a finger and a half and move some muscles in the forearm. Why are you sending me this crap? How am I supposed to make this in a sensory output? And the ulnar nerve is just like, dude, 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 brain, what the hell is going on? And the brain goes, idiot, fine, you're on fire, freezing and being electrocuted, happy? 
And the ulnar goes, holy crap, brain, I'm on fire, freezing and being electrocuted. What am I going to do? And the brain says, you're an idiot, ulnar, a damn idiot. Story 11. If you have severe mental illness like anxiety and depression, you feel like there's an entire universe within your brain. The amount of thoughts, pain, feelings, sensations, imaginations, and perceptions about everything and its complexity is just too much to handle. You literally feel like time has stopped and you're living in an alternate reality. What I'm trying to say is that when you're mentally ill, you have no control over what your brain is feeding your mind. And already considering that the brain has high affinity toward negativity, thoughts, pain, etc., your brain can and will turn against you. Mental illness is no joke. Please take care. Story 12. What you see isn't real. It's a mental model built from multiple snapshots made by the small part of your vision that's reasonably high detail and in color, fuzzy monochrome and motion-only bits from the side of your vision, memories, and parts your brain fills in based on what it expects to see. And it's all on a delay. I guess technically humans do just have input lag. It's imperceptible, but it's there. Yeah, that is weird. I don't like that. Story 13. Maybe not creepy, but I think it's weird that some studies found that your body knows what you're going to decide before you actually decide to do it. So they found the muscles would get ready to do something, say press a certain button, before the person consciously decides to do it. Or your leg muscles will get ready before you make the decision to walk. So when we think we're making a certain choice, our body actually already knew what we're going to do. Well, you heard it here first, folks. Free will is a lie. Story 14. The human heart has its own electrical current, separate from the rest of the body. Human heart cells are fundamentally different from muscle cells found in the rest of the body. These cells are incredibly resistant to becoming cancerous and prioritize energy supply, full power, all the time. The human heart is my favorite organ. It's an absolutely incredible design. Its efficiency and robustness is astounding. Story 15. The fact that our chromosomes can never truly and perfectly replicate themselves. Most defections can be and are usually fixed and won't cause any harms. But if the damage is too big to be fixed, that cell will literally unalive itself. If it doesn't, the cells around it will try to do it for it. If they can't, the immune system and white blood cells deal with it. But if a defected cell survives all three of these countermeasures, it will start to rapidly replicate and replicate. This is how a tumor forms and how we get cancer. Cancer won't stop growing until the host is dead. This is also why it's hard to treat. Since cancer cells aren't a new organism, they're still fundamentally human cells. Any medication that aims to deal with them risks the chance of hurting the healthy cells with the cancer cells. This is why we can't be too aggressive with medication on cancer. Any part that can be physically removed will be removed via surgery, and the rest is taken care of with chemotherapy and meds. If the tumor is big enough to be physically removed but is in a position that makes it almost impossible to remove, like it surrounds vital organs or veins, that person will most likely die. So yeah, there are only three measures between you and having cancer. Story 16. Your eyes can't scan smoothly unless they're focused on an object. Example, if you scan along the horizon of a mountain range in the distance, your eyes aren't moving smoothly along it. They're jumping along it stop motion like. Your brain just smooths it out. However, if someone holds a finger in front of your eyes and asks you to follow it, your eyes will do so smoothly. Fun fact, the eyes slash brain playing tricks on you is how magicians get away with a lot of sleight of hand. Story 17. You and your brain are two different organisms sharing one host. The scary part? When things hit the fan, the brain takes over in an attempt to save itself. Inhaled smoke inside a burning house? Oh, let's close the airways because smoke is bad for brain. Stuck in a freezing cave? Let's sleep and conserve energy and hope someone wakes us up. Lost in the wilderness and a bear got your leg? Let's crawl out to civilization anyway. Here, let me turn off the pain receptors. You might worsen your condition, but at least I'll, I mean, will live. Drowning? Let's shut down because brain hate water. Smoking slash overeating slash alcohol is bad for you, but I kind of need it to feel good, so... I... <laughs> I don't know. Maybe it's because I like horror type stuff, but the idea that me and my brain are two different things, I think that's super cool. Like, yeah, it's freaky in a way, but I think it's... I don't know. Neat. Story 18. Maybe not creepy, but something that amazes me. Its ability to heal itself. Like it has a mind of its own. Get shot, stabbed, break a bone, get a nasty illness. The way it intuitively just knows how to fix itself is so cyborg to me. And to think we came from apes, which came from frickin' life's building blocks. Some carbon, maybe? Like an asteroid hit the Earth with the building blocks of life, and here we are on the internet looking at adult content. How did that happen? The whole evolution thing makes my brain hurt. I need to lie down now. Story 19. Strep A is a naturally occurring bacteria on the surface of your skin. Every once in a while, that bacteria manages to get into the bloodstream, and almost every time this happens, it causes a massive systemic immune response that overloads every system in your body and starts destroying your organs. This process is called streptococcal toxic shock syndrome, STSS. 
which almost always causes a massive cytokine storm, destroying tissue and causing widespread internal necrosis. Almost everyone dies, but those that survive are often severely disfigured and crippled for the remainder of their life. Humans really are strangely durable and fragile at the same time, aren't we? The smallest things it seems can just set our body off on a self-destruction path. But at the same time, as the last OP talked about, we get stabbed or shot, the body will try to fix itself, and often it will do pretty well. Story 20. Haven't seen any placenta creepy facts yet, so here you are. The placenta is like a cancer that knows when to stop invading. It needs to latch onto and modify the mother's uterine blood vessels to get access to blood, oxygen, and nutrients, so it cells burrow in and erode away the lining of the blood vessels. Some placentas don't know how far in to stop invading, and it goes into the uterine muscle layer and almost to the outside of the uterus. This is super dangerous and can unalive the mother. The placenta also gives off small pieces of itself into the mother's bloodstream during pregnancy. These pieces can lodge themselves into places and lay dormant for years and then develop into cancers. They discovered this when finding a lung tumor in a person who had a male child, and the tumor had a Y chromosome. The concept is called microchimerism. Story 21. Maybe not necessarily creepy, but an interesting fact. The body is really good at trying to fix itself, however, in certain situations, in trying to fix itself, it further damages itself. A great instance is heart failure. Whenever your heart suffers an injury, be that a heart attack or chronic damage over a long period of time, it doesn't function as well as it should. This means the kidneys aren't getting the blood supply it demands. The kidneys then DM the heart and say, Hey, bruv, I need more blood. I'ma raise the blood pressure real quick to make sure I'm getting what I need. The heart tries to provide more blood, and since it can't pump harder, it pumps more often against more resistance. This increases the oxygen demand from the heart itself, which causes further strain and more damage. This cycle persists until it's medically managed, or your heart gives out. Story 22. Dissociative Identity Disorder. I'll do my best to explain, but if you're interested, please watch a video or read an article from someone uh, more qualified. When we are little, we don't have a personality. We instead mirror objects or people in our surroundings as we learn and develop our own sense of identity. For example, you unconsciously mirror the way your mom walks, or you feel an attraction to the looks of a particular doll you own. This is because you are assimilating these aspects into different parts of what will later become your personality. If a traumatic event occurs during these formative years, your brain, in order to protect itself, will prevent all of these different characteristics from merging in your personality. Basically, your brain says, when this happened, it didn't happen to me, John was the one who was there. John is the strong one and he can handle this. As maybe he was the part of your personality that was based on your male role model. Dad, uncle, brother, whatever. It's fascinating to think that the brain is capable of splitting your consciousness as compartmentalized parts within yourself. That are completely separate from each other with different wants, needs, life stories, memories, etc. All mental afflictions are really interesting to me. This in particular though? Yeah. Brain's ability to just split things apart and say that's a different person, but then also have that person come out of you? Pretty freaky. I wonder how that happened, you know, or how that came to be. Maybe at one point all humans or humanoid type things on Earth had dissociative identity disorder, and to them that was just normal. Who knows? Story 23. Your brain has a tough time inventing new faces, so every time you dream or imagine people, all their faces are faces you've seen before. Your brain has been subconsciously remembering all the faces you've ever seen without you ever realizing it. 24. Well, how it evolved in time. Not creepy, actually, but weird. 1. We lost our fur, when in nature, without clothes and fire, we wouldn't have survived. Animals that stay most of the time in water generally are hairless. 2. The head of a baby when it's being born is so big that it has to be soft during the birth to not unalive the mother. In general, our births are way more dangerous for the female than for all other animals. 3. Being biped in nature is not really a plus to run away from a possible predator. In fact, only the Homo sapiens have this feature. Story 25. If you separate the corpus callosum, the part that joins the two halves of your brain, your worldview is split into two different perceptions that are now independent of each other. For example, an experiment was conducted with humans that had a severed corpus callosum at treatment for epilepsy in the 50s. First, the experimenter showed the person a word to only one eye at the time. First, the experimenter showed the person a word to only one eye at a time. When the person was shown the word with their right eye, they could remember the word, but not with the left. Second, the experiment showed two different objects, one to the left eye and one to the right, and they asked them to draw what they saw. The person drew the object they saw with their left eye, but when asked to describe it, they described the object in the other eye. 
Story 26. Humans can manipulate and condition other humans to do and believe almost anything under the right circumstances. The human brain has neuroplasticity, meaning that the brain can be molded into technically any way you want. If you take, say, 100 babies and raise them the exact same with the exact same beliefs, almost all of them would stick to that for the rest of their lives. Genetics are really only a minor role compared to the environment. Nurture is really taking over the nature debate in psychology right now. Then you look at our society now, and you see that it's already happening with social media shaping people into carbon copies of each other. Story 27. Over a million mites, Demodex folliculorum, live in the hairs on your body. Most notably, your eyebrows, eyelashes, and nose hairs. Your immune system does not identify them as foreign bodies. At night, they leave their hiding spots to mate and consume dead skin cells. Up until recently, it was believed they simply stored waste in their bodies, but a genome study indicates that they do indeed have anuses. Have a nice day. Honestly, I kinda see this as, like, the whole spider thing, you know? I'm cool with it. They don't bother me. I don't bother them. They actually help me out. As far as I'm concerned, a symbiotic relationship. Great work, guys. Also, can I just say I'm very proud of getting that name on the first try. Story 28. Even on a fairly normal-looking body, no obvious deformities or birth defects, you may have different parts. For just one example, some people have an extra ligament in the knee. These do better after ACL surgery. That's how it was discovered. Two orthopedic surgeons wondered why some people recovered better than others after the surgery, and they found that they all had the extra ligament. I grew a third tooth on the one next to the upper canines. Two baby teeth dropped out before the third permanent one, and my grandmother at least partially grew back her tonsils and adenoids after having them removed. Some people have internal organs reversed, rare but possible. We're not all the same. Story 29. Our brains are actually extremely low-frequency, multi-band transmitters. We both send and receive analog radio waves organically. Due to how radio wave propagation works, these signals are trapped by the atmosphere. The physical size of ELF waves are humongous. Anywhere from 1,000 to 100,000 kilometers long per wave, per second. Theoretically, it's possible to record a person's thoughts. Although the size of the wavelengths, and that there may be several different frequencies in use, makes it difficult. And because everyone is transmitting all the time, it's difficult to separate one person's transmitted thoughts from another's. And because the structure of each brain is unique, even if patterns were identified, it would be impossible to tell what those patterns mean. That is, unless you could figure out a way to isolate and record a person doing a repetitive task, such as walking down a narrow hallway, opening a door, turning left. If you could record their brain turning left perhaps hundreds or thousands of times, you could eventually figure out which signal is turn left and not ham sandwich. And you could just transmit turn left to them whenever you wanted. Theoretically. This is one of the only ones in here that I actually had no idea about. That's freaky as hell to think about. I do not want a dystopian future where my thoughts can actually be controlled, and no thank you. Or red, either, by the way. I don't want that. I've got too much going on up there that confuses myself and scares myself. I don't want other people in on that. Anyway, thank you so much for watching this video. I hope you learned something. It was a very educational one. And I also hope you just enjoyed. I also hope you have a wonderful day or night, and I'll see you in the next one.